This video is sponsored by Carbide 3D, maker of the Shea Poco line of CNC's. One thing that prevents a lot of people from getting into CNC is they're worried about the complexity of the software and the learning curve. But with this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I made this clamp rack to organize my small clamps. And then I'll show you some other projects I made using the same steps. So you can repeat this over and over. It doesn't matter what type of project you're making. Stick around at the end of the video and I'll tell you how to get all the files you see me program today for free. Before we get started, if you'd like to learn more about Shape Oco or their line of CNC's, I'll put a link in the description below. You can go check them out for yourself. Really, I'm all about time savings. And if someone else has already created a file or at least an SVG, in other words, an image outline of that file, that can save me tons of time and get me cutting faster so that's what I'm gonna do a lot of times I like to go to Etsy or cut rocket Etsy you'll have to buy the files cut rocket the files are free but there's less on cut rocket so come into Etsy I go to just if whatever you're looking for whatever type files so I always put CNC and then whatever you're looking for CNC clamp rack in this case and then scroll down until I find one that I like I like the looks of this one here from dry forge creative open that up and then it looks like a nice little file. So all you have to do is add that to the cart and purchase it. If you're gonna use Cut Rocket, which is an excellent resource for CNC uh, files, especially if you're new, you can look under tools, sign stores. The sorting of these is a little weird because sometimes you'll find tool things under organization. We'll click tools. You can go down where you see different types of stuff that you can download. This one here says Harbor Freight Clamp Rack. We'll check that and you can see that uh, it's pretty cool. And then from there, you just download the project. No matter which place you've chosen to download the file from, all you have to do is go to the import tab, click that. So if you download it from Cut Rocket, you'll see the C2D file. You can open that up. You also import SVG or DXF files into Carbide Create the exact same way. As you see here, I was able to import this file and then you can tweak it and delete things that you want or don't need. However, a lot of times these tool paths aren't set and that's where you'll have to do the work. But you saved a ton of time because now you have a basic footprint of the file. And that's what I like about getting those files from Etsy or Cut Rocket or my website, because we put them there as well. I'm gonna be using three quarter inch plywood. I just like the thickness of it. And to set this file up, it's pretty easy. I've got two different kinds of clamps here. I've got a Bessie clamp and a uh, Tay Tools clamp. These are both small clamps. And first thing you need to do is just measure the bar thickness. On this one, it's just about 3 16 of an inch. And on this one, we are about the same, so that's good. So we want to make sure that these slots right here are at least a quarter inch thick so that it slides in there really easy. And they are because I have my grid set at three quarter. If you click on the design and then that little table looking thing, that's your grid spacing. It's 0.25, which is a quarter, that's what we want. To set the tool pass, we're gonna click on this design and then click contour, which means cut, it's gonna cut it out. So we wanna use the stock bottom, which is 0.75 or whatever thickness material you're using. We want it to cut on the inside so that, because if you cut on the outside, it's gonna be wider than, than a quarter inch in those gaps. But if you cut on the inside, then it's going to be one quarter inch when it's cut. We're gonna set our tool and I'm gonna set mine uh, softwood since we're using plywoods. Go to end mill and then I'm gonna use a one eighth inch um, down cut. Now I do wanna put some tabs on here so that it doesn't roll around after you cut it all the way out. You just pick a couple of places on here that you're gonna be able to easily get to them, but it's gonna hold it in place after it gets through cutting. In other words, it's gonna be cutting, it's gonna raise up and leave a place so that it doesn't come loose. So wanna make sure you add a couple of three tabs on here just so that it doesn't move on you. On this one though, you wanna make sure you got on the outside right. That way it leaves that exact size. Same thing with these braces, you wanna make sure that you're leaving, you're cutting the outside and then you'll put a tab or two on there as well. Once you get all the tool pass set, you just save the G code. In other words, you're gonna save this code so that you tell the program that runs the CNC what it needs to do. So all you do is click save G code and then you'll name it whatever you want. So this one we'll just put 731 clamp rack. Now what I wanna show you on motion, one of the great things they've added recently was, let's take this piece, this back piece for instance. So instead of 0.75, I mess up and I put 7.5 inches, right? That's gonna mean that CNC bit's gonna try to drive down seven and a half inches deep. That could be a catastrophe. Carbide Create is where we design our project and Carbide Motion is what controls the CNC. They're two different programs, but they work together. When you save the G code, then you load the G code into Motion, which tells the CNC what to do. So just open up Carbide Motion. One of the great things about that, when we put that error in there earlier, remember, I'm gonna load that file up and that's gonna be the, the bad one right here. What I really like about the new version, the newer versions of, of Motion, if you don't have it, go get it. If you look at the front view, you can see this giant hole right there. That's not, that's not supposed to be there. 
That should not look like that. What that's saying is that bid is gonna drive down that deep. And our stock right here, you can see that it's not near that deep. It's only three quarters of an inch. You wanna make sure that you check that front view for sure. So now let's load the correct file. And how I get these files onto this laptop from my other, I just email it to myself. But if you're just using one laptop, you don't have to worry about that. So this is the correct file and we're gonna look at the front view. This is to see this is how it's supposed to look. You can see that the thickness is here and then you can see all the cuts are gonna happen right inside that plane. Once we're done with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and initialize the machine. That's just gonna get everything set. Basically initializing means it goes over to the corner and touches off the touch off point and then comes to the front. All it's doing is basically saying, okay, I'm ready to go. And then it comes up here for you to load the bit. Once the bit is loaded, you just click resume and it's gonna come over and touch off this edge point so that it sets the depth of the bit to the table and it knows exactly where it's at. One of the great things I like about the Shape Oco line of CNC's is they come with everything you need. They got all of these clamps that come with it, these work holds, some bits to get you started, dust collection parts, everything. And one thing you quickly learn about CNC is if it ain't held down, things go bad fast. So it's a good that they include these things. Once we have the material loaded on, we're gonna set zero. I always set my zero at the bottom left, but there are times when you may need to do it in the center, like if you're doing circles or different things like that. But we're going bottom left on this one. Really, this is the slowest part of it is when you just kind of eyeballing everything. You want to make sure it gets over there. I like to get it to where it touches the very top of that. And sometimes that takes a minute just to get everything set just right. I like where that's at. So that's what we're going to set. I also want to add some magnets so that I can stick them to the back of this. Now you can screw it to a wall or you can make a French cleat on the back, however you want to mount it. But I'm going to do rare earth magnets. I'm just going to take a caliper and measure. And this one's at 1.16 around. So I'll make that, that cut will be about 1.17, I want it just barely over. And then for the thickness, it's right at 0 0.10. So I'll make it 0 0.09. I'm gonna put three of them on there. I think that'll hold the clamps up there. And from here, I'm just gonna add this to the file. I'm gonna make a, those circles across the back, evenly spaced out, and then the dimensions I just said. Now from there, we're just gonna start the job and hope everything goes as planned. We'll see how it turns out. All right, so I encountered a little trouble and that was my fault. And that's the thing about CNC is it will only do what you tell it to do. Uh, one is the circles that I cut for the magnets were too big because for some reason I was thinking 1.6 instead of 1.16 in diameter. So I have fixed that in the file. And when it was cutting this brace, apparently I forgot to put tabs on it because it cut it all the way out, which makes it loose, which makes it get into the bit. We're gonna fix those two pieces, set that up, and we'll recut and see what we got. That's what's great about leaving those tabs. That stuff doesn't move as long as it didn't get all the way cut through. So that keeps everything nice and in place while your CNC does the rest of the work. This is a handy little tool to have if you have a CNC to cut those tabs. Now it's time to assemble this. It should be pretty easy. I have decided that I don't need these big blocks. So I'm just gonna use these little ones and we're gonna just space them evenly probably right there on the outside edge. Make sure you turn the holes to the back for the magnets. I'm gonna use wood glue, but I'm also going to use some CA glue to just kind of help hold it while that wood glue dries. And since we're not building a clock, I'm just gonna eyeball it. I think CA glue will be just enough to hold the braces and CA glue for the magnets. Now to see if this thing will hold clamps. I'm a little worried that the magnets aren't gonna be strong enough, but we'll see. <laughs> Dang it. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> Super fast way to add some clamp storage to the workbench or the wall or wherever you wanna hang these at. You could put them anywhere. I wish the magnets had worked out, but trial and error. If I had stronger magnets, I think it would work. But it worked out. I actually like it here better, I think, than stuck on the workbench over there. Another awesome thing I made with the CNC was a tool holder for the CNC. I've got all of my bits, my most commonly used bits in here. And then also I can hold my box cutter where I cut the double stick tape. Then I have a place for my caliper, so I'm always able to find it when I need it. Of course, wrenches, Allen keys, everything that I need as far as bits and wrenches go stays in this drawer. And the great thing about the CNC is you can customize anything you want to fit just about anywhere you want. For this drawer insert, I just use half inch MDF. That's more than enough for just sitting in the drawer. I cut every one of these pockets at 0.2 inches deep 
and then just various lengths, just whatever I thought I would need. I made them a little longer than each bit. I actually made them to fit these holders uh, from bits and bits because that's where I get my bits from 90% of the time. But I also made some extra long just in case I had something else that needed to go in there. I just thought about what I would like to have, what type of holder, uh, what I would like organized, and then I made it to the way I wanted it. As you can see, there is a little place side to side so that I don't, I don't want it to just to be super tight. There's no reason for that. But once it's in there, it looks like it's custom fit to that drawer. With this drawer insert, I did a very similar thing. I just went to Cut Rocket and found a file that was kind of close to what I liked, download that file, and then I tweaked it to fit my needs. And what that meant was I added a couple of extra trays, added my own caliper outline in there so that it fit my caliper like I wanted it to. And then I just added some extra little trays and things to hold some more bits than the actual file had originally. And for the router trays and the walnut tray, which is just a spinoff of one of my router trays, I did the exact same thing. I brought everything into Carbide Create and just tweaked it like I wanted it as far as the width, the length, and all the pockets. Now for the caliper outline and the Allen wrench outline, I just searched that on Google. Caliper outline SVG, Allen wrench SVG, and found ones that I liked and brought them, imported them into the file and then set the cut depth and the length and the width and all that to fit my specific wrenches and caliper. This thing is a money maker for a shop. I've proved it with the sales we've had at 731. Andy Bird has proved it with the $10,000 with the CNC he's done. I'll link that video in the description, but it's also just fun to have. Being able to make custom projects like you've seen today is just fun. If you wanna get all these files that you saw me program today for free, the clamp rack, the drawer insert, and the router table trays, all you have to do is click the link in the description below and sign up for the 731 email newsletter. I send out regular emails letting you know about new content as well as new products and plans. Sign up, get the files for free. Now, there may be some information that I didn't cover in the video that you have a question about. Please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll answer the best I can. However, if you go to my.carbide3d.com, there is a wealth of information there from starting out as an absolute beginner and knowing nothing to making your first projects. It's really good information. Since filming this, Carbide put out a brand new update to their Carbide Create software, which you can download for free. I'll put a link in the description below to the latest version. They've added some really great features. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about Carbide is they're constantly trying to incorporate feedback from their customers and their team into their product to make it better.